Well, hello. Whoop, whoop, whoop. You know, it always helps. Hang on a second here, folks. Why am I not seeing? Hello. All right. Sorry about that, folks. I was looking at my uh, mixer here, and uh, my microphone was gone. All right. Well, anyway, we're up here. You've got Sim Toolkit in front of you. We are getting ready for flight number two for today. It's going to come right out of the same place we landed. Uh, Caltag headed for, and I have to pull up something here to be able to read this, uh, Anvik Airport. Uh, all of it, of course, in Alaska. So folks, feel free. Grab a plane. We're on a ramp here. Uh, it's 108 miles, pretty much direct flying. Uh, going to see if my tw uh, Twitch bot's working. That's the only thing. There it is. Uh, it's just basically direct to the ANV VOR, and that'll get us there. So uh, we'll do a little longer here. We had some uh, interesting uh, offline problems that we'll have to work through. The uh, Navgraph Sim Brief buyout, oh, it's going to be a pain in the rump. I can see it coming. Oh, my apologies there. need a little bit of coffee. But we're rolling here. Uh, we're going to go through this on Sim Toolkit real quick, make sure nothing changed. We should still have probably four people wanting to go. That's what my load sheet originally said, but... Uh, with what I went through earlier, we'll see. So let's pull up that load sheet. Four people, 900 pounds, cool. Uh, 1,255 pounds of fuel. Uh, so close to the same loadout. So let's do this, get rid of that. Pull Sim Toolkit out of the way for the moment. And... Uh, I am going to, whoop, I have not filed my flight plan yet. Stand by. Uh, everything looks good. Filing the flight plan. There we go. Coming up on VAT sim. Connecting. Yes. Now, if you followed me with the Flight Factor aircraft and the Zebo, you don't come up in mode C. You actually have to get power on the plane and turn the radios on, and in some cases, the microphone and all of that to get it there. So I find that kind of, not the microphone, the transponder, my bad. Uh, kind of find that interesting here, because I'm pretty sure I turned it off. Let's take, whoop. I just realized what I was doing. No, I did not. Maybe that's what's going on. There it is. Okay, yeah, I ha that's weird. There's no power on the aircraft, yet the transponder was working. <laughs> you got to love flight sim. <laughs> All right, so let's do this. Let's get the door down. Oh, let's try that. Ah, oh, darn, the fuel truck didn't show up. Oh, well, no big deal for me. Um, all right, so exterior is complete, cabin doors locked, loaded. Uh, we're going to be loading the baggage and fuel. Hopefully this plane behaves well uh, in a quick turnaround uh, setup like we're getting ready to do. 1,255 pounds. We're going to look to see a couple things here, like where's our alternate, 1,255 and apply let's hope this all works this may uh, have to re uh, reset the uh, aircraft to be able to do this so we'll see um all right so we've got the weight and balance control locks were never put in so they're still f just as free as before uh, parking brake is set, pedestals are in, overhead panel, they are still on. Um, lost my place in my checklist. Oxygen. Come over here. 
all looks good still in the green um, cabin temperature shows cabin temperature what is it called cabin temperature mode is in off and seatbelt signs are on let's get those turned off okay and finally uh, let's make sure we get our props to full first here They have to do it this way just to go. Oh, no, not that way. There we go. Get them up to full. They're in cutoff. Throttles are set. Okay. Uh, landing gear lever down. This time we're going to have the nav lights ready and the beacon when we turn the power on. Over to the fuel panel. Boost pumps on. There's one. There's two. Battery switch located right here. And cabin signs are on. We're ready to start up. Let's do a quick check of the enunciator. Okay. And Here we go. All right, we're going to do everything again exactly the same. Hang on, I'm just seeing if I can... Okay, well, we're just going to try it. Okay, so coming down, let's get the uh, number two ready to go. So we're going to turn the arm on. Eighteen, nineteen, and here we go. Okay, and we'll push that to full. And we're going to start up number one now. Well, that was not what we wanted to see, so bear with me, folks. Let me uh, change gears here a little bit. Okay, let's give this a try. Sorry, folks. I just switched back. We're going to restart X-Plane here real quick. And uh, go ahead and see what we can do. So, 
I had a feeling that might happen. I'm kind of used to it in flight sim that hardly any of the aircraft would allow you to do a turnaround like that. Should have assumed his wouldn't. Okay, so we were at Caltag. Go to that one. Okay. Okay, there we go. Everyone knows this uh, look here. All right, bear with me here. Just got a couple things I want to get done with the sim here. There we go. Yeah, when I didn't see the fuel truck, I should have really figured I needed to reset it. So let me reset a couple of other things here real quick. Okay. And I may have to reset some toolkit that we had some problems with. We'll get into in a minute with. But as you can see in the chat, uh, we are still uh, working under that flight plan. And I'm just going up here to. Hope for the best. Come on, airplane. There we go. It's like, where are my routes? There we go. And PyRep, give me a second here. I'm just getting my ACARS program reset up here. Okay, and we'll be flying at that and A and V, and we'll hold right there. Okay, so again, my apologies, folks. Get some toolkit. Uh, we're going to try something here real quick. So uh, I M E T A R, whoops. All right, so we're still connected. That's always nice to know. All right, so moving on, we're going to go back. We're going to make sure the aircraft is properly loaded. And 1255, I believe, was the fuel load. Yes, it was. All right. Okay, and... Let's go on down. Let me back up my pages here. There we go. So now we got to go up top, get all of these turned back on. I think he added some. Uh, when I look at the default, it's not this uh, many light switches, but that's okay. That I think the defaults move quicker on the mouse than this one. So, but anyway, those are just some of the little things I found with this. Now, I will tell you some things that I have noticed over time that he has done. I think I started with 9.0, might have been 9.1. Um, <clears throat> aside from the occasional engine fire, uh, occasional, I had, had a, quite a few. Um, Uh, when this thing first started, all of the text you see here, minus the uh, names of the switches here, so minus these, 
this this one this was really blurry and uh, he's been able to uh, make it readable make it able for us to go in here and check <clears throat> okay so we got those set <clears throat> my apologies again uh, so coming down here uh, weight and balance set uh, control locks oops we need to go back sorry and make sure since we've reloaded there we go okay um, seat belts seat belts is this one right here go to the top that also turns on the no smoking seat belts are on parking brake is pulled and set um, pedestals are in the overhead set let's check the oxygen make sure nothing's gonna go wonky on that looks good also gonna do something here there we go I'm just gonna fix all systems just in case there are things on a timer so okay so the uh, uh, cabin temperature mode is in off at the I'm sorry this one and off Okay, looking down, condition levers, their fuel cutoff. We're going to pull these forward. That is your props. And I'm going to make sure the throttles move again. Okay, good. Landing gear lever down. Nav lights on. Beacon on. However, until I turn the battery switch on, they don't come on. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this for now. Okay, coming down, we need to turn the boost pumps on. Battery switch located right here is coming on. Um, fire detection system. We'll go up top here, he says cautiously. Hold up. Hold up. Extinguish those. Voltmeter. Battery looks good. Okay. And again, cabin signs are on. All right, so let's give her a try again. Turning on the right engine. You, you know, you got to just love that those props start spinning. That is an X-plane thing, and I like it. There's 20 going to low idle. And while we're waiting, we monitor. We make sure the ITT settles. The oil pressure is coming up. Oil temperature is coming up. I think I got them right. Yep, pressure is in the green, temperature's up, and we need to get that starter switch off. <laughs> okay, and then what I'm also going to do is go ahead and get us some bleed air going. Next up, left engine. You'll see the blades start to spin. 18, 19, here comes 20. Push it up. And let's get the inverter on number one this flight. And we'll get the bleed air going. And let's push it forward. 
let them warm up here. Okay, before I turn the avionics on, let's get the anti-ice on. Okay, any ice is on to keep our um, FOD basically from getting in the engine. Now, yes, there is a heating element to it to get chunks of ice to not go into the fan blades, but it's also meant to keep rocks and stuff. We're on a gravel uh, ramp. All right, so let's press on. After start, avionics can come on. Down here on the bottom, we want to turn the power on, turn the boost pump on, and let's get the trim on. And it's located right between the seats. Also, setting that to HSI. And that's this arc right here. I'll push the sink. May or may not. It did the heading, and that's all that matters. Okay, for now. Okay, coming down, let's get the cabin mode on to auto. Our lights are coming on. We'll get the recognition lights and the tail flood on. And switch-wise, we're done, over except on the fuel panel. Here, we're going to turn our transfer pumps to auto. Cross-feed on. Okay, the enunciators are clear except for anti-ice and our uh, ignition in the uh, arm position. Okay, so now what we're going to do is set up our GPS. So we're going to move to the center here. Turn those on first this time. And then we're just going to make sure all radios are on. And I'll get our altitude here in a minute. Uh, I'm also going to get us on fat sim. Connecting. Flight plan will be 14,000. Uh, let me check one item. Okay, that looks. Looks doable. Okay. We're going to stay IFR. We're going to be going up to 14,000. Okay. And let's. Okay, so we got our radio set. Okay, we're going to dial in A and, uh, A and K. Twelve forty. Okay, so that's at twelve forty. At three sixty five, okay. So 12, 40, 365. All right. <clears throat> Over here, we'll put 14, 80. believe that's what Galena was. Okay. 
1480. Okay. All right. Now, let's get in here and put this flight plan together. This is our old one, so all we have to do is go to the menu and look for the one that says Delete Flight Plan. Click Enter. And it's going to do this. Then we're going to Papa, Out, Alpha, Out, Kilo, Out, Victor. And then, hang on just a second. They don't need to be revving that long now. We can pull them back. Oh boy. That's the one thing I hate about X-Plane. Saw they went down the fuel cutoff. That's what that was with them coming back up. Let's make sure everything looks good. All right, so the next fix, oh boy, gotta love it. A and V. Papa, oh, I do hate when I do that. I got it wrong. Sure did. There we go. Enter, enter. Just making sure. K, V, N, V, A, N, V. Okay. G, nice for you. Welcome aboard. Thanks for uh, taking time out to come watch us uh, have fun up here in Alaska. Hope you're having a great day. Okay, so the flight plan is set on the main one. I'm going to set it on the bottom one again, as you all know, as a backup. So we're going to go menu, delete flight plan, PAKV, drop it down one, A, and And as you've all noticed, I don't set this usually for the arrival. I use the other one. And then Papa. Alpha. November. Victor. Okay, and take that out. We'll be on that. Okay, so we've got our radios, our GPS all set up. 
We're ready for taxi and run up. Uh, I am online. Oh, no, I'm not. There we go. Well, actually, we are online. Yep, there we are. Okay, so close that one out. There we go. All right, folks, and all I got to do is click start on the ACARS program. Okay. And one quick check here with ACARS. There we are. And here we go. Well, let's make sure the here we go is ready. Okay. One thing to do here. 2977. Okay. 181 for the feet. Okay. So 29. Okay. Looks good. Here we go, folks. Go to high idle. Okay, so as we taxi out, Okay, we're going to come to a halt here. Okay. Um, auto, f hang on a second, let's get this out of the way. Auto feather is armed. Props, condition levers are at high idle. Suction is in the green. The pneumatics are in the green. Decision height. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, again, flight instruments. Uh, first off, let's get air coming into this airplane. All right, flight controls are free. One notch of flaps. Transponder to on. Okay, and finally, boost pumps, engine friction, radar, and all set. Pedo heat coming on. Okay, here we go, and the auto ignitions are on.
All right, so I got my chart ready. Okay, so here we go, folks. 2-1 is to my left. Well, we got to turn to the right, back taxi. We are IFR this time, folks, so we'll be climbing through the clouds. Twelve forty, and it is in VFR there right now, folks. So it could get fun. the end of the runway we'll turn around and we'll get right into the takeoff and speaking of which pedo heat has required transponders on synchro phasers off strobes and auto uh, ignition are armed and on And the reason I back taxi, folks, is I'd be foolish if I tried taking off, missed the end of the runway because I just didn't use it all. Um, so. All right, then during the takeoff run, we'll watch the enunciators that the uh, auto feather illuminates ignitions are ex extinguished and the engines we keep under red line. All right, folks, if you're wanting to, you can join us. We are currently at Papa Alpha uh, Kilo Victor, uh, heading to Papa Alpha November Victor, Anik, coming out of Caltech, and we're just about ready to turn on the runway. We'll just start from here. We got 4,000 feet to work with, plenty for the King Air 90. And the big ones, we don't want a red line here. As soon as we get lined up, I'll show you as best I can. It'll be the top two gauges. So the ITT and the torque, we don't want a red line. The props are going to go pretty close to red line, if not red line. We're fine with those. But the top two, we don't want a red line. How you prevent that, folks, ease the power up. I go to 70%, stabilize, sorry for the little skittishness, oh, we got to get up in the air. V1, rotate. Okay. Gear up. Gear up. Okay, and we're going to go ahead, flaps up, V2, okay, a little more, there we are on course. Let's get that autopilot on as soon as we can. Oh, 
Okay. Yeah, I forgot to set my heading to the right course. Let's get her on a better intercept. Set for 128, we're gonna let's get us set here. And what we're gonna do is let me pull this out. The CDI button here, you click that so it says GPS. Then you come down here, go to nav. Y'all damper, AP is on and you're set. And it's gonna swing us over on course. Now, let's set our props. We're a lot higher than I like to be. So we're gonna be watching this one, let me kind of zoom a little bit. The 2000, this mark here. Okay. I'm also going to look at my torque. Okay, that's all I'm gonna get. I'm at the stop on this, so I don't wanna push it and all of a sudden get engine fires. So. Looks like we're turning, <sighs> but we're not. <laughs> All right, so we are airborne. Landing gears up, laps up, autopilots on, engines, climb power set, auto ignition as required. Props are at 2000. Let's get the prop sync on. Auto feather can go off at this time. Oh, still not low enough, okay. Engine instruments, cabin signs, we'll let them up and about for a little bit. I'm gonna crank us up a little bit. And right here, it's telling you what you're set for now, 1,600 feet a minute. And since we're approaching, if not below, I'm going to go ahead and turn on our prop ice, windshield ice. And let's go ahead and cycle the boots. Now what I want to do is set it for IAS 147. Perfect. Now it'll maintain that as we climb. All right. And lastly, okay. Recognition lights, cabin signs. It's funny, depending on which checklist you look at, folks, I have one that says Optimi. I don't know who this one came from. Uh, it says uh, cruise power settings are 1,700 on the props. The other one I have from Atlas Aviation says 2,000. Pick it. I don't know which one's right or not, but uh, 
kind of concerned here. We're not picking up our VOR yet. And we're 32 minutes out, so I'm going to keep my uh, doubts here. But I'm uh, wondering, why am I not picking that up? On 1240. And 365, okay. All right, and... 10,000 feet. Lights off. Even though, for the most part, folks, they were off when they went in the belly. Okay, looking at my charting again. Uh, we could be uh, pulling some information off Unicly. Let's uh, try that. 16.9. Well, we got Unicle to 43 miles. So, I mean, they are tuning. Okay, so this line will be our VOR to an an Ike. This is going to Unicle, so we kind of get our cross bearings here once we uh, start picking it up. We're through 11,700. Minus 11 outside, folks. And one last thing I do want to check here. There are some spot showers in and around Anayak. And I'll pull up the uh, uh, information here. Oop. There we go. And that way you all can see what we're doing. Okay, so what I am also going to set up here. Let's go ahead and since we're 25 miles out, 79 miles, I'm going to go ahead and go to our procedure page, select the approach, enter, RNAV 17, right? Oh, actually, the other side would be better, it looks like. 280, so coming up from the north, so it'd be best. Uh, You know what it'd be best to do here? Stand by. Well, folks, <laughs> that's what you get uh, for being in a hurry. I clicked fade to black instead of uh, fade over the uh, charts program. All right, so charts.
Well, I'm set up for a different runway. We're about to go to a different one here. Hang on. Uh, this was the RNAV for 17. Let me get 35 up here. What we're going to do is go to UYADA, come over to Ruby, and come in that way. So I'm going to add that wind. Yeah, we better. Enter. There it is at the bottom. And we'll load. What I'm going to do... Let's go ahead and go direct. So we'll activate the approach and then we'll talk about it. And there goes the turn to go direct. Punch that up. There's Unicleat just to let you know. There's our, or took us to get to 150 mile range. That might be why, and I may not be more than 60, so we'll see here. It'll pop up shortly, and we'll dial this down as we get in closer. Okay, so looking at the charts, um, let's get rid of this real quick. Across the top, you see the frequencies. It's an RNAV approach. Uh, there is no glide slope component to this. It's just we get on a heading, follow it in, land. And judging by the uh, 1,000 foot ceiling, this is going to be fun out of curiosity, is that below minimums? No, 780 and one mile. So we'll see how this works out. Um, so final approach is 351. And again, this is for runway 35. V-E-Y-B-U. We got to be at 2100 feet, which is right here. And then we'll take it in. Uh, LDA or MDA is 780 feet, which is 400, call it 500 feet above the ground. And uh, the airport itself is 297 MSL. So we'll hit Ruby at 3,700. So plan UYADA 37 to 4,000, somewhere in that ballpark, 3,700 to 4,000. And then we'll follow this. Toyno, 2,900. VEYBU at 2,100. And then we'll need to descend probably at about... Five to six hundred feet a minute to make our uh, uh, glide slope of three to uh, three degrees. Three point zero five is what they're wanting us to do on this. So a little steeper than we're used to. And again, we've talked about our uh, minimums being seven eighty and one. And here is the depiction of how we'll missed approach. Climb straight ahead uh, to thirty seven hundred feet. On a, making a right-hand turn, direct Ruby, go into the hold. And the hold is right-hand uh, right hand turns. Okay, so there you go, folks. There's the arrival brief. We'll punch this out. Well, actually, I'll keep it up. And... All right, there we go, folks. So I hope you all enjoyed. Um, I'm not the greatest yet in the transitioning from, you know, doing multiple stops, especially if the airplane's not capable. I know when I tried doing this in FSX with Captain Sim C-130, as soon as you hit feather, boom, game's over. You got to reset. You know, you're not going to bring them out of feather. And I don't know if it's because I don't know how to or what, but... I'm assuming that's what happened here with this. All right, so.
I'm going to give her a little bit more torque here to get some speed. There we go. Pick it up a little bit. And uh, let me just zoom in here. 66 miles out. Okay, we'll get in a little closer and then we'll start our descent. Again, remembering our descent is coming down to... ...3,700 feet is the goal. So looking out there, let's see what all we have in the uh, chat area. Uh, Andrea Hagas, uh, welcome aboard. We uh, thank you uh, for giving us a try, taking a look at us, seeing what you like or not. Hope you're having a great day. Feel free to chat away in our chat room. We'd love to hear from you. And folks, if you are liking what you see, we would love for you to follow us, um, add, you know, add to our community. Uh, we also run a Discord channel you can see in the lower right. That'll allow any conversations we're doing online. We can kind of continue those in an offline fashion. Questions, comments, destinations you'd like to see us go to. We've got two more after this in Alaska for next week. And then uh, we're back to the uh, Airbus and uh, Zebos the rest of this week. Uh, we'll be flying um, tomorrow and Saturday. Saturday is going to be a little bit of a long flight. We're going to be going from Kelly Air Force Base to Seattle. Uh, that will be in the Zebos uh, 737. It'll be in C-40 colors, which is the United States Air Force's technically BBJ uh, is what they have, but it's configured for VIP travel. Uh, but we're going to be flying tomorrow, St. Petersburg, Russia, to, hang on a second, I'm trying to remember, Stockholm, one of the airports in Stockholm. Now, not the big one, ESSA, that we all love to go to. ESKN is where we're going to be taking the Airbus into. So, uh, hope you all can join us for those. We try to kick off at 16Z. We were late today. My wife had a uh, meeting with her uh, peeps that she's uh, the boss over. So, you know, unfortunately, being the CEO, CFO, agent, and uh, uh, basically the one in charge, I have to sit and wait that's fine so but anyway that's what we got coming we hope y'all enjoy the ride uh, we'll begin our descent here probably oh, in about 10 miles let me go ahead and see what happens when I dial this down one yeah let's see here let me just make sure I don't start losing screens there we go. I've got basically two, com three computers running here, folks. You know, one day I probably do need to put a, a snapshot of the flying with my cockpit. Now, it's not as elegant as one of our followers, uh, Jay Drums, who has a Hawker 340 fuselage in his garage. Not as elegant, but... It also doesn't take up my garage. Whichever side of the pendulum you want to be on, to you. <laughs> 
for me, I don't need all of that. I'm perfectly fine with what I got. Some minor modifications need to be made here in the future, but for now, this works. And if it ain't broke, it doesn't need to be fixed. And I just noticed we're kind of high, so hang on a second here. Let's kind of get her to come down to 14 if we can. What I'm going to do is see just what the GPS is saying again on distance. 47. I'm going to go ahead and also get ready to start our descent. Come on, airplane. You got to settle. Okay. Now... I set up okay so let me bring it down to four push in 37 okay so we are now set as soon as we uh, stabilize here we'll begin our descent perfect let's get the GPS out of the way now I'm gonna bring up the bottom panel we're gonna simply click descent I'm going to come back and let her set into a descent while pulling back on the props or pulling back on the throttle to about, oh, this looks good. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to set uh, VS. And we're going to be holding uh, this vertical descent. And I'm just checking. There we go. 1600. That's displayed right here in the lower left, folks. a nice little plane I have to you know he has really done a really good job with this plane folks and you know I'm gonna get that link out yeah we had the one engine fire folks but that was again uh, on me because I really don't know if the airplane can be turned or not here's a link to it over at X-Plane, if you're interested. Again, folks, it's not, I'll be, I'll be totally honest. Devil Doc 324 thanks for the follow. We do appreciate you. Hope you're having a great day. Now, for the uh, mod that we're flying for this King Air, I am going to be blunt and say, folks, you really need to know what you're doing in this plane. Um, I don't like saying that a lot about flight sim planes, but this one. Um, well, thank you, Devil Doc. Having a nice flight from one sim to another. Appreciate that. We also, again, appreciate you following us. So uh, hopefully uh, you continue to follow us. Like I said, tomorrow we're going to St. Petersburg to... Uh, Stockholm, Sweden. I think it's Sweden. Um, so that'll be a fun flight in the Airbus. So, but folks, if you're, if you know what you're doing with the sim and you've got a pretty good handle with it, give it a try. I mean, it's it's gonna throw you for a loop. Don't be surprised you see those engines burn every now and then. The sad thing is, and I didn't know this actually was a thing out there. There's no fire protection. At least that I know of on this plane. Let me pull some power back here. So, and I, and you know, what's funny is it tells you to check it. I have no idea where the T handles. And I'm trying to remember from my Air Force days dealing with C-12s, which is the military variant of this. I don't remember any. But that's also pushing 
40 years. Sorry, something in my throat there. 40 years ago, folks. Um, yes. <laughs> awesome. We'll check you out and see how your uh, stream goes, too, there, sir. Appreciate you coming on board. All right, let's see here. Going through 8,000 at 28 to go. I may be able to flatten this out a little. Yeah. Eight, five. I'm gonna flatten this out a little. Let's get rid of that first. So, let's see how that did. Flatten it out a little, slow it down a little bit too. And we'll be, uh, and here come the clouds. <laughs> Temperature outside three degrees below zero Celsius. So yeah, we'll keep the anti-ice on. I'll go ahead and pull some more power back. Okay. And as you can see, remember I did not set the approach in on this. So you can see how we're veering away to come into Pop Alpha November Victor. Now, um, I know one of our followers, um, oh, it's gonna be hard to find him. Hang on a second. He's having some troubles with the uh, 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 1,000 uh, uh, GPSs. And uh, I have yet to fly that one. So uh, we may pull it up and take a look at it and see what we can do here on the ground. We'll see, though. Not going to do any flying with it. Okay, we're aiming for 3,700. We're 1,000 feet above. And we're at about 18 miles out. Let's make sure there's no great accumula around. Okay, good. Now, up in Alaska, one of the biggest uh, threats to aviation is what's called, what I call, I don't know if it's an actual aviation term, granite cumulus. Basically, you fly in these clouds and you hit them out because they're obscured. Thankfully, we're 2,500 feet the minimum here, so we're good there. We should not hit any granite. And just to make sure our anti-ices, I'm going to go ahead and punch the boots. Okay. One thing I got to find out in the King Air is how to get those to stay on. I've got the windshield on, right? And the good thing is we may actually be coming out of the clouds, so that could be a good thing. That is so interesting. It never came up. Okay, well... Okay, so now we're at the speed, so we're going to start bringing in some power. I'll try to keep it about 150, 160 as we get into this. Okay, we'll 
We'll set that to 20. Same with this one. Okay. And basically all I'm using this one for is to see the airport, to make sure we're aiming at it at least. There we go. Good speed right there. Okay, so let's go through our descent checklist, briefing set, pressurization set. Cough uh, averted from your ears by the mute button. Cabin signs back on. Lights on. And a real quick here, check uh, 278. So we make sure we get the right altitude. There we go. And let me make sure I didn't miss anything on the other checklist. Uh, windshield ice, power set. Okay. Now, when we make the turn off of our initial fix of uh, UNADA, we'll uh, um, turn the synchro phase off, get the... Uh, uh, Auto ignition never turned off, but we'll get the uh, uh, auto feather back on. So again, with this mod, folks, um, really, if you're a brand new simmer, oh, this one's not for you. The C90 that comes with X-Plane is a great start. If you love King Airs and you want to get into them, that's where I would start to get really good with it and control and everything. And when you feel up to it, watch the video first so you understand what you're going to run up against. Then give this a try. Uh, this is a, a bit more complicated. It's like going from uh, when you guys fly Microsoft Flight Simulators prior to 2020. I don't have it, so I can't make much comments but if you flew like fsx or a century of flight taking the 737 default learn it understand it and when you jump the pmdg 10 times 100 times thousand times better product but it's very complicated and you want to make sure you're able to stay ahead of the plane so you can you know get a good flight in with it Otherwise, you're going to be chasing yourself all day long. I find myself sometimes with this. So, well, we're going to give her a try here. We're now three miles. So it's time to go ahead and slow up to 150. Okay, absolutely nothing is tuning in. Oh, that's why. There we go on that one at least. Okay, we're slowing up. And what I want to do is I come in from the uh, final where we turn in at Rope Robu, which is 11, quite a ways out. I want to be in a position I can slow down. Here we go into our turn. Let's go ahead and get her into the flap band. Flap band, for those of you not familiar, it's this white arc on the uh, airspeed indicator. You get into there, you can use your flaps. Okay, so. 2921 okay so we're pretty close we'll ease up on the add in some power to hold 150 synchrophaser off okay flaps we'll use 
gear will come down. Auto feathers, arms, standby on that condition levers. Okay, now, when we turn for the runway, I'm going to push the props full forward. Actually, no. We'll, uh, when the, right before we push the gear down, we'll, we'll move them forward. Okay. Here we go with the final turn. And a descent to 2,900 feet. Okay, now I'm going to dial this in tighter. Basically, I'm flying 156 for the speed right now. Next up, 2100. Okay, now, good thing is we're popping out of the clouds, and we're going to go ahead, and I'm going to keep us going to 2100 at this power setting. Wait a minute. Twenty five hundred. Okay. Again, let's do a quick and I do mean we'll get this quick meter Oops, P A N V. Still 2978. That's what I'm mainly worried about is that we got the right. Okay, so there we go. There we're in the arc. Okay, now we come down to a thousand. Okay, we're three and a half out, gear down, first notch of flaps. Gear down. Okay, props forward. Now you see this RVS, that means we can't go into reverse without them full forward. Airport in sight. And I got way below blue line. The blue line, you don't really want to get below. 1,000. Okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and take it from here. And as you can see right now, we're below glide path, so we're going to bring it up. I think we're on a plateau here, too. And 
and the wind is variable. Okay. Here we go, folks. See if I can't. Are we on a paved runway? Five hundred. Four hundred. Three hundred. Two hundred. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. Ooh. Alright, folks. That was horrible. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I landed that horribly. Uh Hang on, folks. Okay, I somehow eked it into where everything looked pretty good. Okay. All right, folks, well, we'll just leave it right here. We'll shut down. That was a very horrible landing. Um, yeah, we'll just leave it at that. Okay. Yeah, it's not going to let me. Okay. Yeah, I got a feeling it sheared the, the prop off. It loves to. That's the other thing I run into here. Okay. So. Auto ignitions are off. Okay, hang on, folks. This thing is really being a booger. All right, so we've got everything set.
Okay, so we just got to reduce electrics now. Pedo heats off electric uh, condition levers, low trim. We'll get readjusted. Down here, we'll turn these off. Get these off, GPS off. Okay. Um, okay, we're disconnected from there. Okay, and let's go ahead and go for shutdown. Okay. All right, shut down, cross feed, transfer pumps off. Okay, cabin temperatures, uh, avionics off. Okay. All right. Wow. A lot to say, but I'm going to save it. 346 feet a minute, although, yeah, that wasn't a great landing. <laughs> so let's uh, queue it up here, go back. I've got everything turned off. Uh, Yeah, there we go. Everything that would be needing it. All right, so let's go backwards. Take a look at this landing because it was horrid. Oh, and I'm not in the right position here. All right, so let me uh, cue up some outro music. It all went to the fan as soon as I got within ground effect. And let's watch this engine right here. I think the props went off. That's pretty good though that they got that effect. 
that kind of, that's kind of neat, even though it sucks. <laughs> we'll watch it from the co-pilot side. Can't really see anything on that side. That's interesting, though, when you think about it, though, folks. Um, even with the blades off, I should have still been able to steer. Uh, so yeah, well, you know, it is what it is. One more view and then we're going to call it. You can barely see it out there, but this ought to be a good landing, at least from this vantage point. Well, we're going to just let it go from here, folks. Folks, we've had a great time. We want to again thanks Devil Doc uh, 324 for following the stream. Folks, it's been a pleasure flying both of these flights. We thank you all for uh, tuning in to Flying with Mike. Y'all have a great rest of your Wednesday. Get over the hump into Thursday. The weekend's right ahead. Folks, God bless. Y'all have a great day, and we'll see you again tomorrow.